Yo, what's good guys? Um, Kayak here and welcome back to a new tutorial. Uh, today I'll be showing you guys some of the effects that I enjoy using in most of my edits. Uh, most, of those, most of those effects are plugins of course, meaning that you have to install them. They're not, they wouldn't come with After Effects. Um, and if you are wondering where you could get your hands on those plugins, then you could just do your quick Google research and I'm pretty sure they're going to be accessible in either Discord servers or some websites. And other than that, I wouldn't be going in depth on how to use those effects. I'll just be showing you what each effect does and how you could use it um, as it would take a lot of time if I was to demonstrate how it, how it actually works in depth. Um, so the first effect that I'll be showing you guys is Signa. It's a plugin, of course, and it gives off this um, Omino Diffusion type um, like bad DV TV distortion, and if, in my opinion, looks um, really cool. I use it in both of my recent edits on Instagram. I don't know if I if you've seen them yet, but if you haven't, go check it out. One is an origami edit, and the other one is Demon Slayer edit. So uh, when it comes to signal, I wouldn't recommend using it on the entire edit as obviously butchers the quality of just like cooling it. As you can see, it just makes it look much worse. Uh, you could use it with a combination of other effects or just use it as one frame. Um, as for signal, I'll just be showing you guys how I use it in my own way. I wouldn't be going in depth, but for the signal strength, I'll just keep like most of those effects, uh, I mean settings as they are. I'll just go down to Luma modulation and turn this off because um, if it's turned on, it'd be looking weird with this black thing on the side and that type of d distortion on the bottom um, doesn't look as good as in my opinion. That's why I just keep this off. And other than that, I just keep it the way it is. Um, but you could go and change some settings um such as if you were to go to the tv distortion and then change the thick distortion you could get a nice effect you could use this as one framer in my opinion it looked real nice um combined with other effects like deep low um and so of course if you were to add a shake and stuff create um a nice one framer in my opinion the other effect that i'll be showing you is pix dither it's also a plugin um, as for this effect, it's, uh, it looks similar to Halftone, which is another effect that I showed in one of my other, um, my favorite effects, uh, tutorials. And it's a real nice effect. There isn't much setti settings that you could be messing with, uh, but there's those patterns and palettes. They're like presets that you could just like mess with, get some nice colors actually. And as for Pix Dither, I think you could utilize it um, alongside your CC on top of the entire edit. I don't, I don't think it looked that bad. Just give it a nice stylized look. As you can see, you could get some real nice colors here. Um, well, this looks good. Um, and of course, just have Deep Glow <laughs> on top of it. If I look way better with Deep Glow. Everything looks better with Deep Glow, to be honest. As for the other effect that I'll be showing you is going to be Omino Diffusion. It's a bit similar to uh, the first signal effect that I showed you, but it's uh, one of the more popular effects. As for Omino Diffusion, I just decrease the error cost by a bit until you get a nice look just like this. Of course, if you decrease it all the way down, you're going to get an effect very similar to CC Threshold. Um, this effect still works. Uh, you can use it this way, but I don't see the point of using Omino Diffusion when you could basically recreate it with a bunch of other effects. Um, so that's why I just keep it as it is this way. As for error side, I don't mess with it. It doesn't look good in my opinion, unless you're using it as one frame. Um, as for the colors, it depends on the mood you're going for, the vibe and the colors. Um, you could either keep it as black and white with a um, different saturation of grays or you could increase it a bit and get a nicer look. As you can see, this is without Omino and this is with Omino. Uh, with Omino, it obviously looks way better in my opinion. And of course, you could mess with the width of the colors, um, animate them, get a different look. Another effect that I'll be going over is um, Radial Blur. 
is one of the more popular players um, that's being used in a lot of edits now it wasn't used a lot back then it's being used a lot now um, so it's basically just a circular blur and it's a pretty cool effect um, as for radio blur it's a very heavy effect on your PC so make sure that you're not combining it with a lot of um, other effects of motion tile and all of that um, my opinion uh, I shouldn't go with the, with very high values either because we just took the same to be honest shouldn't go or exceed over 100 um, as for area blur I usually keep it around 5 or 10 I usually animate it at the beginning of the edit just like this Just animate the blur at the beginning of the scene and it probably look good alongside the transition and all those um, other stuff they're gonna be adding such as shakes and stuff um, as for the radial blur it doesn't only give a circular blur but you could also switch the anchor point move it and get a different type of blur that would probably look nice as you can see as for the little noise and the grainy texture that you're getting with the blur, you can fix it by the anti-aliasing quality. You can just change it to high and you should get a very much smoother um, type of blur. But it's a bit heavy on the PC. Use it to zoom. Um, which is pretty nice in my opinion. I've seen a lot of people use the little blur to hyper zoom probably seen it in a lot of edits or if you want to hide motion tile on some specific frames you could also use radial blur so last effect that i'll be showing you guys is gonna be minimax there isn't much to explain about minimax it's just another blur type effect that you could basically use everywhere to be honest but i'd say it will look cool as a one frame in my opinion um so for minimax I usually just increase the radius and that's it. I don't mess with any other values. And as you can see, the blur is kind of nice. It's uh, cubic and it gives a unique look from the other normal blurs. I'll just show you a quick comparison between um, some other blur and minimax. As you can see, uh, with any other blur, it would just give a different look to minimax. It wouldn't give the exact same result. I usually use it with offset. I just offset and add some minimax, maybe some BCC lens directional blur as well. Increase the gamma and then the scale. The offset, as you can see, gives such a nice one framer. And it kind of um, magnifies and makes everything look cubey in a way. As you can see, it looks really cool with one framers and offsets. Um, but other than that, I don't know much about Minimax. I don't really change any of the effects or the settings. Uh, so yeah, just keep it as it is. Increase the radius by a bit and you should get some nice results. And obviously it wouldn't look the same on each clip. It will look different on each clip. So with that, you just gotta work your way around it. And try to change some of the settings. Until it fits um, the scene that you're using it on. So that's it for today's tutorial. If you enjoyed it, make sure to like and subscribe. Um, other than that, stay safe and I'll catch you in another tutorial. Peace out.